vehicle is in startup. And there we go, Falcon 9 is in startup. The vehicle's internal flight computers have now taken control of the launch countdown. Launch right around on countdown. Go for launch. And with the final go from our from our launch director, all systems are go for a launch of Falcon 9 with the O3B Empower payload. You have 30 seconds to count. Plus 35 seconds into launch, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying the O3B Empower payload. Nominal power and telemetry. During ascent, we will tilt the nine Merlin 1D engines, and that will turn the rocket horizontally in what we call a gravity turn. Now we're still going up, but we're also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. Moments ago, we did throttle the engines down in preparation for max Falcon Q. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Our maximum aerodynamic pressure. Max Q. The rocket typically needs to go about 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. So keep an eye on that stage one telemetry in the bottom left side of your screen. Now coming up in about a minute, we do have three events in quick succession. Those are Miko, or main engine cutoff, stage separation, and SES-1. And Miko is when we shut down the nine Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. Stage separation is when the first and second stages will physically separate from one another. And SES-1 is when we light that single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. Getting some great views from stage one here, looking down towards the Earth. You can see those nine Merlin 1D engines powering our way into orbit. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And ignition. Wow, amazing view there of stage separation and MVAC ignition as well as Miko from the ground. You're now getting a live view from our MVAC and stage one camera. We did just successfully cut off the nine Merlin 1D engines, separate the two stages, and light the MVAC engine. We're coming up on fairing separation in around 15 seconds. confirmed. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. And we did just heard we did just hear confirmation that we had successful fairing separation. We will be attempting to retrieve those halves today once they fall back to Earth using our recovery vessel Doug. We're now just about T plus three minutes and fifty seconds into today's mission. We are in the first of two planned MBAC burns for uh, prior to satellite deployment. 
At T plus six minutes and 30 seconds, you should see on your screen the first stage is entry burn. And for the entry burn, we do relight three Merlin 1D engines. And that's starting with the center E9 engine, followed shortly after that by the E1 and the E5 engines. And this, of course, slows the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We need to slow down to reduce the, uh, the re-entry forces, and that helps us recover and reuse the first stage. During that entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but we're still moving very rapidly. And that causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also sometimes called the rocket's plume. And this deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. And that soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses. Again, on the right side of your screen is a view of our Merlin vacuum engine. You can see in the telemetry in the bottom right, we are accelerating very rapidly towards orbit. And on the left, we have a great view of our first stage. You can see it's starting to accelerate now, heading back down towards the surface of the Earth. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. Great news there on the nets. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. Everything is looking great so far in this mission. Should be starting up the entry burn on the first stage in just around 30 seconds. Stage one entry burn startup. Stage one FTS saved. There's confirmation of the startup of the entry burn on the first stage. You can see in the telemetry on the bottom left side of your screen, we are now rapidly decelerating. And this burn should last around 20 seconds in total. Stage one entry burn shut down. And there's confirmation of the shutdown of the entry burn. Reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, and that enables more investment in critical scientific research. The Falcon 9 first stage that is supporting today's mission has performed the entry burn for the ninth time today. And this booster has previously supported CRS-26, OneWeb Launch 16, Intelsat IS-40E, and five Starlink missions. Stage two, terminal guidance. The Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. And the MVAC engine on the second stage is optimized for about 220,000 pounds of thrust in a vacuum. And coming up next at around T plus 7 minutes and 50 seconds, we should be shutting down our MVAC engine on the second stage. Stage 2 FTS is saved. And that should be followed quickly by our landing burn on the first stage. Stage 1 transonic. There's confirmation of second engine cutoff one, just awaiting confirmation of a good orbital insertion. Nominal orbit insertion. There we go, great news. We have inserted the stage into a nominal orbit. Again, we are coming up on the landing burn of the first stage. Stage one landing burn. There we go, we did just light up that central E9 engine. We're just waiting for Falcon 9 to land back on our drone ship, a short fall of Gravitas. Landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And there you have it, folks. That landing marks SpaceX's 245th recovery of an orbital-class rocket. And that includes first-stage landings for both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. 
While the mission isn't over just yet, the second stage does have two additional burns prior to payload deploy. Uh, but since we don't have views of deploy due to the size of the payload adapter, we are going to end our mission coverage here. Deploy is scheduled around the T plus two hour mark, so be sure to check back in on our social accounts for confirmation of deploy. All of us here at SpaceX want to give a big thank you to our customer SES for entrusting us with today's mission. We also want to give a shout out to the Range and the Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's launch. This launch concludes our 282nd overall SpaceX mission to date and our 83rd launch just of this year. And of course, thank you to all of our viewers for tuning in and for your continued support. We will see you again soon.